Don't you just love coming home after a long day? A few things top that feeling of leaving the world outside when you lock your door behind you. Yet, even though we like to take breaks from the outside world, we'd be lost if we weren't connected to the rest of the world via our technological gadgets. Humans love any form of technology that makes our lives easier. We also use a variety of tools every day and have all sorts of useful things lying around the house. And they all have a backstory. Yes, even our clothes have surprising histories, quirky backstories, or peculiar facts about them you've probably never heard before. Today, we've uncovered the weird and wonderful facts behind the everyday objects that fill our homes and lives. I'm Mike with List25, and the following are 25 of a few of our favorites. But before we begin, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content. With that out of the way, let's go. Twenty-five. Barbie has completely unrealistic proportions. While the world is going crazy about the Barbie movie, we just thought we'd throw the following bit of trivia out there. Barbie has impossible curves. There. I said it. And from the lips of every woman in the world comes a loud, duh. But honestly, we're not just talking about her hourglass figure. According to the Yale Center for Eating and Weight Disorders, the average woman would need to grow two feet taller, expand her neck length by 3.2 inches, add five inches in the chest, and drop at least six inches in the waist to look like Barbie in real life. Barbie's head is actually so disproportional that if she were real, she would be unable to walk or raise her head. 24. Zippers were named after the sound they make. One of the most interesting accidents in the world's history of things was the naming of this everyday item that keeps your purse closed and your pants up. The zipper's first name was the hookless fastener. Nevertheless, when B.F. Goodrich added hookless fasteners to a line of boots in 1923, people began calling them zippers because of the sound they made when they were zipping up. This zip. And while we've grown used to them, and zippers may seem dull and oh so obviously essential today, in the first few years after their creation, they caught flack for their depravity. In addition to closing tobacco bags, American prudes complained that zippers made it too easy to take off their pants. Take off your pants and jacket. That's a reference. Let me know in the comments below if you know what that was. 23. Keys were not always small enough to fit in a pocket. The most noteworthy indulgence in this life is not high thread count, bedding, or the quality of your crystal. It's the sense of refuge and protection that comes with clicking the lock of your front door and shutting it behind you. Our keys are often cute gadgets. The ones that unlock the wooden locks on gigantic marble and bronze doors of the Greeks and Egyptians could be three feet long and were so heavy that they were often carried slung over the shoulder a fact recited in the Bible. It is written that the prophet Isaiah declared, and the key of the house of David will lay upon his shoulder. Really glad these just fit in pockets now. 22. Plates were once made of bread. You'll love the medieval trencher if you've ever slurped clam chowder from a bread bowl and marveled at the goodness of getting that close to your food. These plates, popular in Europe and the UK, were made from huge circular loaves of whole wheat bread that have been aged for four days before being sliced into two three-inch rounds. Merry dinner guests seldom ate the trencher. Those remaining in one piece after supper were either distributed to the poor or thrown to the dogs. Now we just have plates we can't eat instead of don't eat. 21. A gallon of gasoline contains 31,000 calories. A disclaimer, I didn't test the following fact myself, and neither should you. Now that we've covered that, you should know that if you could drink gasoline, you'd get 31,000 calories of energy, which is equivalent to 15 to 20 days worth of food. Scientists discovered this while attempting to compare the efficiency of an automobile to that of a human pedaling a bicycle. They found that a person could cycle approximately 912 miles on a single gallon of gas by calculating how many calories it takes to ride one mile at 15 miles an hour. 
20. The fork was once considered a tool of the devil. In fact, the term fork comes from the Latin furca, which means pitchfork. The first dinner forks were put to use by the elites in the Middle East and the Byzantine Empire. Maria Ayeropolina, the niece of Byzantine emperors Basil II and Constantine VIII, married the son of Doge of Venice in 1004. She packed a small container with two pronged golden forks that she used for her wedding banquet. The people of Venice were astonished, and when Maria died a few years later from the plague, St. Peter Damien declared that it was the punishment of God. With those words, St. Peter Damien slammed the door on using forks in Europe for the next 400 years. 19. The chopstick is 4,500 years older than the fork. The most common chopsticks are waribashi, the disposable kind made of inexpensive wood found at many Chinese and Japanese restaurants. They are not recent inventions by any means. In the 18th century, warabashi became common in the first Japanese eateries. According to Shinto belief, something that has been in another person's mouth picks up aspects of their personality. As such, you did not share chopsticks, not even if they'd been washed. The very first examples of chopsticks date back to roughly 1200 BCE. They were discovered in China's Hunan province. These ones date back to 2019, I got them in Tokyo. They're very nice. Can you use chopsticks? Let me know in the comments below. It's very simple. It's a quick, quick, quick lesson. Just take your hand, put your hand there. Uh, we're doing it this way. Place it. Uh, it's really simple. And then you just, sorry, move, wait. Uh. Wait, that's wrong. It's weird to do it backwards. Hold on. Yeah, and you're just moving your hand. You leave your thumb there. It's very simple. I'm looking in the wrong place. I was watching myself do it. 18. Nail polish has an interesting backstory. The next time you want to complain about the cost of a mani-pedi at your local salon, remember that several thousand years ago, ancient Babylonians, men and fighters at that, had their manicures done with solid gold tools. Their color choice, black, was done to terrify their enemies during battle. The ancient Egyptians, on the other hand, used nail polish to display their social standing. The lower classes were limited to nude and light-colored tints, while the affluent and influential wore the now classic red. While the earliest nail polishes were produced from egg whites and other natural pantry staples, today's nail lacquers come from a far less nutritious source, car paint. A makeup artist who worked for Revlon in the 1920s modified car paint to create the first colorless enamel. 17. Goats pulled the first baby strollers. This is one of the many fascinating facts we've uncovered that left us a bit frazzled. Goats were used to drag the first baby strollers, or a dog or a small pony, but definitely not the parents. In 1733, William Kent, a landscape architect, designed the first stroller for the third Duke of Devonshire. Strollers were still comparatively unstable when the mid-18th century rolled around, but they finally included handles so that parents, as opposed to animals, could pull the baby behind them. 16. Croissants are not French. Even though croissants are commonly associated with France, they were actually baked and served in Vienna, Austria as early as the 13th century. Back then, it was a denser pastry called a kipferl, but it was baked in its iconic crescent shape. There are many different stories about how the croissant finally made its way to France, but the first verified debut of the modern croissant we know today, made with that flaky, buttery, melt-in-your-mouth puff pastry, didn't happen until the early 1800s when a Viennese baker started selling the crescent-shaped pastries in Paris. 15. In ancient Egypt, a pillow wasn't really a pillow. It's impossible to think that comfort hasn't always been the objective for those of us who waste half the night folding, flipping, or fluffing our pillows in an effort to achieve the perfect sleeping position. Pillows in ancient Africa, Asia, and Oceania were stiffer than the padded cushions we've come to rely on for a good night's sleep. Some of these early pillows, dating back to the Third Dynasty, about 2707 to 2369 BCE, in fact resembled child-sized seats with a curving portion resting on top of a pillar. These stands stabilized the neck, not the head, possibly to protect the extravagant hairdos that were popular at the time. I'll take my Harmony pillow. This is fantastic. 
Best pillow I've ever had. Seriously, it's, it's amazing. Goodbye. 14. The first napkins were lumps of dough. The napkin dough was first used by the Spartans, residents of ancient Greece's military superpower, who cut it into little pieces and shaped and flattened at the table, expertly cleaning any oily residue from their fingers before being thrown to the dogs at the end of the meal. Raw dough eventually evolved into baked dough, or bread. Because there were no utensils on the Greek table, bread worked as both a spoon and a fork, the meal would have been chopped into bite-sized pieces in the kitchen. As such, using bread to keep your fingertips clean before taking a dip of the hummus was not only tasty, but also extremely practical. 13. Albert Einstein co-invented the refrigerator. Although General Electric manufactured the first refrigerators in 1911, the coolants used to refrigerate the insides were highly poisonous. In fact, it was so toxic that a leaking refrigerator led to the deaths of a whole sleeping family in Germany in the 1920s. Albert Einstein, who read about the tragedy in the newspaper, set about finding a solution. He collaborated with his old pupil, Leo Szilard, to build a refrigerator with no moving parts, eliminating the need for possible faulty seals. Though their invention was abandoned in the 50s in favor of newer technological breakthroughs, Stanford scientists are revisiting it now as a method to bring cooling technology to areas without electricity. 12. Playing cards came from China. The first known cards were the size of dominoes and were created in the 9th century CE. Card games grew popular in China as a wholesome and positive activity that was not only meditative and challenging, but also social. It was, in fact, one of the favorite pastimes of Emperor Muzong of Liao. We are 100% sure that when the Emperor fought to restore stability and authority to his throne after a rebellion against him before he died in 969 CE, he certainly had no idea that his beloved pastime was going to travel the Silk Road via India and Persia before kindling an insatiable appetite for the game in Europe. 11. China also gave us toothbrushes. Before sticks with bristles, our ancestors chewed on an array of twigs, like neem, to keep their mouths fresh and teeth clean. However, in the 1400s, someone in China had the excellent idea of applying stiff boar bristles to a bamboo handle, and the modern toothbrush was born. According to an article in Science Illustrated, we continued to use the boar bristles for our toothbrushes until 1938, when Dr. West's Miracle Toothbrush adopted nylon bristles for the first time. 10. Keyboard Slow Down Your Typing do you ever wonder why all the letters on a keyboard aren't in alphabetical order? Well, this system of keyboard organization, if you will, that we use today was in fact created to slow typists down. You see, back in the day, typists grew so skilled at what their fingers were doing that they frequently jammed the typewriters they were working on. The QWERTY keyboard, which we've come to know and love, actually helped limit the times the machines got jammed, and we're still using it to this day. Interestingly, uh, many people today don't have any issues with speed typing, regardless of the keyboard layout. 9. The small bumps on the F and J letters. While I'm still talking about keyboards, have you ever noticed the small bumps on the F and the J keys? Well, they were strategically placed there to help people remember where to place their index fingers when using QWERTY keyboards. Knowing where to position your index fingers enables you to type faster by providing you with an instinctual position for your other fingers. And the ridges allow you to navigate your way across the keyboard without continuously looking down. 8. Wearable glasses have been around since 1284. Imagine lifting a piece of glass the size of a mirror to your face whenever you need to read something. Before the 13th century, when some entrepreneurial-minded Italian shrunk the glass in substantial frames enough to be finally worn on the nose, it was the best solution mankind had come up with for vision issues. After a while, Spanish eyeglass designers came up with the notion of fastening ribbons to the frames to keep the glasses on the short-sighted wearer's face. Finally, in the 1700s, these ribbons were swapped with the arms that today's glasses have, enabling them to rest securely on the nose and ears. Seven. Weber grills were born from a buoy. Have you ever noticed that the traditional round Weber grill looks like the bottom of an ocean buoy? Okay, ignore the fact that this is a Kingsford. It's just a visual aid. That's because the original Weber grills were, in fact, made from the bottom of an ocean buoy. George Stevens Sr. was employed at Weber Brothers Metalworks in Chicago, manufacturing Coast Guard buoys. In 1952, George came up with the fantastic idea to chop the bottom off one of the buoys. 
adding three legs to the base and a vent and handle to the top of his creation. His neighbors initially made fun of his invention, but quickly wanted one of their own, as did the rest of the world. Weber grills, which are produced in Illinois, are sold in over 72 countries today. Yeah. Six, electric fans don't cool the air. If you want to test this theory, you can set a thermometer up before an electric fan while it blasts on turbo mode, and the temperature will not drop. In fact, if you place the thermometer near its operating parts, the temperature could rise simply because of the electric current. However, while the fan doesn't cool the air, it does cool you or anything else with water in it. In addition to boosting air circulation in a confined space, the fan increases evaporation, making any liquids, like the sweat on your skin, cooler. Five, a waffle iron was the inspiration behind one of the first pairs of Nikes. Bill Bowerman, a track and field coach in the 50s, didn't like the way running shoes were being made. Coming up with his own design, he first created the Cortez shoe, but wanted to create something even lighter that could also be worn on more than one type of terrain. In 1970, while eating waffles with his wife, he came up with the idea to recreate the waffle texture on the running shoe soles. The, of course it's Mickey. Ah, thank God it's not hot. The waffle sole shoe was born and subsequently appeared at the United States Olympic track and field trials in 1972 in Eugene, Oregon. Four. Never use duct tape on your ducts. Duct tape is a fantastic product that can be used to solve lots of household dilemmas. However, it should never ever be used for a leaking duct. A university lab tested multiple kinds of tape and sealant against different duct materials, and only duct tape failed consistently, and it did so spectacularly. In fact, having duct tape on your ducts can actually see you slapped with a fine, as it's a building code violation in several cities. Feel free to keep your duct tape wallet, shoes, handbags, hammocks, and picture frames. We even know of a duct tape exhaust on a vehicle, but fix your ducts with foil tape or aerosol sealer. Three, but duct tape works great for warts. While duct tape is useless on ducts, it can be used to remove countless eyesores from your home. And it's also excellent at eliminating eyesores from your body, like warts. According to research published in the Archives of Pediatrics and Adolescent Medicine, duct tape was more effective in eradicating warts than freezing them off. So we won't place it anywhere near our ducts, check. We'll use it for those unwanted bodily miniature cauliflowers, double check. Two, there are more people with cell phones than toilets. The following fact is a shocker. According to a 2015 UN report, Two and a half billion of the planet's seven billion people do not have access to a toilet, with the majority living in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. In itself, it's a sobering thought. Considering that another report put the total number of mobile phone users at six billion, that means that there are more than twice as many people with mobile phones as those with functioning plumbing, proving that we still have a long way to go in providing everyone with basic amenities and sanitation. One. Coffee makes the world go round. At number one on our list today, we discuss coffee. Well, because we love it. And because it makes the world go round. Really. Coffee might be a crucial part of your morning ritual, but it's even more critical to the global economy. 25 million farmers grow coffee in 50 countries, making it the world's second most traded commodity behind oil. Brazil accounts for 40% of the world's annual production. The most interesting coffee-related statistic is that New Yorkers consume coffee at a rate seven times that of the national average. Yet Finland actually has the highest per capita consumption. So what are some other fun facts about everyday items lying around your house that you might think other people don't know? Let us know in the comments below. And like I said before, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content. Join our Discord, that's up and going. Um, become a member, do all the fun stuff. Seriously, all of that helps us bring more content to you. It really, really helps the channel. I know all us YouTubers just say that, but we mean it. Like interacting with us is, it lets YouTube's algorithm know that you guys like us. You really like us. And uh, it keeps us going. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you next, wait. <laughs> I love you all. 
and I'll see you next time. There we go.